now to a special reporting effort here at the News Hour that we're calling America Addicted. Opioids are now the biggest drug epidemic in American history. Every night this week and beyond, we will explore the impact and efforts to address this crisis. I recently traveled to one of the hardest hit states, West Virginia. It has the highest death rate from drug overdoses in the country. We spent some time in one city to get a sense of just how wide and deep this crisis is and how opioids have changed the very fabric of life there. Burger King, Station 3, Station 3, 3210, Washington Boulevard for an overdose. Advise females outside on the ground. It's not even 1030 in the morning in Huntington, West Virginia, and it's happened again. Another overdose, this time just outside a fast food restaurant. A woman is unconscious and turning blue on the sidewalk. First responders move in with an anti-overdose medication, naloxone. A few minutes pass, she revives as if waking from a nap. The needles she used go in a sharps container. The woman goes in an ambulance. It's become a well-choreographed dance in this city on the banks of the Ohio River, at the heart of America's opioid epidemic. I bet you I've been to 20 overdoses in that house. Jan Rader is the fire chief in this city, a place now defined by both the scope of its struggle and its attempt to fight back. We have no fear of failure. If we try something and it doesn't work, let's move on to something else. Of the 100,000 people who live in Huntington and surrounding Cabell County, officials estimate that 10,000 of them have become addicted to opioids like heroin and pain pills. Officials say there have been more than 100 deaths in Cabell County so far in 2017, with more than 2,000 overdoses expected by year's end. Steve Williams is the mayor of Huntington. The level of addiction is beyond anyone's comprehension. I have never known anything that was so all-consuming. It is affecting everybody, everybody in, in this community. That means slowed down traffic at businesses like Rollerama, open since 1962. It's just running the neighborhood's down, running the business off, running the people who would spend money here, who are trying to do good here, running them all off. Trouble at the regional pharmacy chain, in the parking lots, and inside the stores. It's difficult to hire employees. It's difficult to find people who can pass the drug screens. Needles scattered in the parks. We've found them in the past. We've found them in the playgrounds, different things. Bathrooms, edges of parking lots, boat ramp. I mean, the flood, the flood water brings a bunch of them in down there, believe it or not. Needles clogging stormwater catch basins and threatening sanitation workers. They may actually have to physically reach down and pull debris out. We use a needle-proof, cut-proof gloves uh, to protect our employees from being stuck. She's an IV drug user. Yeah, and bacterial infections tied to IV drug use now common throughout the city. Some of them go to the bones, some of them go to the kidneys, some of them go to the brain. Things that, you know, you didn't expect to see very often because they were described as rare in your medical textbook. And now you see them all the time. The health consequences are deeper still. At Cabell Huntington Hospital, one out of every five babies delivered has been exposed to drugs before they were born. We are a 15-bed unit, and today we have 18. Um, last week we had 26. Sarah Murray helped create a unit specifically for these newborns. You're keeping this place dim for the baby's sake? Yes, um, we try to keep a low stimulus environment. That means we keep the lights low and we keep the unit as quiet as possible. Babies here go through withdrawal for drugs like painkillers and heroin. And more often these days, other substances being cut into the heroin supply, like fentanyl and the anti-seizure medication gabapentin. It's just devastating for these babies. Neurological symptoms that we had never seen before, we're seeing now, and um, they have rapid eye movements, just um, different than anything I've ever seen. They roll down, they roll up, back and forth, and they tongue thrust, I mean, they're thrusting their tongue all the time, and they're very uncomfortable. Hold your bear, don't let him fall. It's not clear what the long-term impacts on these children will be. But in the short term, many of them are entering the foster care system. Olivia was born addicted to cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and um, a pain pill that contained snake venom. 
Some children, like two-year-old Olivia, are being placed with foster families in other parts of the state. We're going on a bear hunt. Olivia now lives an hour and a half from Huntington with her adoptive mother, Stephanie Atkins, Stephanie's husband, and their five-year-old Ethan, who came to them after similar circumstances. The system, Atkins says, is stretched dangerously thin. You're going to have children that are just sitting in a group care home with no family to speak of because there's physically nowhere else to put them. That's where I see us going if we don't figure something out to try to stop the flow of children just flying into, into, into the foster care system. How did West Virginia get to this point? In some ways, it was a state with a target on its back. One heavily dependent on manual labor jobs like coal mining and manufacturing, jobs that leave workers prone to injury and chronic pain. When a new group of painkillers emerged in the mid-90s, pharmaceutical companies and distributors saw a ripe market. Eric Eyre of the Charleston Gazette Mail recently uncovered documents exposing the extent of the pharmaceutical campaign between 2007 and 2012. There had been 780 million uh, hydrocodone and oxycodone doses shipped to West Virginia over those six years. We're one of the smallest states in the country. We have 1.8 million people, so that comes out to roughly about 430 pills per person. An eventual crackdown on pain pills caused many to switch to heroin and fentanyl, far more potent cousins of drugs like hydrocodone and oxycodone. Overdose deaths spiked. In March, a state fund to pay for burials for the poor ran out of money five months before the end of the fiscal year. The drug dealers are going to pay for this, just the way that I see that the pharmaceutical companies are going to, to pay. In Huntington, in Cabell County, officials have resolved to respond to every overdose case aggressively, ramp up treatment and accountability programs, when appropriate, through drug courts that have a strong track record of leading people toward recovery instead of incarceration. Do I understand you have four months and two days clean? I do. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and graduate. And by giving young people incentives to steer clear of drugs in the first place. Every middle and high school student in this district is randomly drug tested if they want to participate in any extracurricular activities like play sports or even drive their car to class. At this high school, 700 of the 1,700 students take part in the program. Almost every one of them tests clean. Lean your head back and take a deep breath. But all that, Fire Chief Raider says, hasn't been enough. The overdoses keep coming. The same people over and over with seemingly few lessons learned. They refuse treatment. They go right back out on the street, typically get high again. Um, how dispiriting is that? You just it, literally brought someone back to life and they're choosing, or they're, maybe it's not a choice, but. It's very frustrating on every level. But that doesn't stop us from saving the life. Yeah. It's a very um, stressful time to be a first responder. I probably was a firefighter for 10 years before I saw a significant number of dead bodies. Yeah. These young guys that we're hiring, 23, 24, 25 years old, they're seeing 50, 60 dead bodies a year. And not just dead bodies, they're seeing young dead bodies, sometimes they're friends sometimes people they graduated from high school with. Raiders crew responded to 3,500 calls in 2015. Last year, 4,500. This year, they're on track for more than 5,500. One out of every four times a fire truck leaves the station, it's for an overdose case. It, it messes with your mind. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, it hurt. On one of those calls last year, Lieutenant James Mullins was pricked by a needle. Months of tests and treatment followed. How'd your life change after that? My personal life, a home changed quite a bit because of not knowing, the unknowns that I, if I had a disease. The fallout changed the way he views the city's attempts to save people who repeatedly overdose. Dude, you can't even walk straight. He wonders if these programs might actually be attracting more drug users to the area, fueling the cycle. I believe to a point that we don't need to be going to the same houses over and over again and keep giving these people chances because it's a waste of resources. You have to keep telling yourself that, you know, this has uh, been a 20 year uh, decline and it's not gonna be fixed in a year or two.
Police Chief Joseph Ciccarelli says all of this will probably get worse before it gets better. You see abandoned buildings, abandoned houses, and, and these, these were neighborhoods that were, uh, you know, working class neighborhoods 30, 40 years ago uh, because there were jobs here. Neighborhoods that have become the scenes of devastation, including one mass casualty situation last year when 26 people overdosed in a single day. Here we had one, one residence in, in particular where we had six people down at one location. Drug-related crimes are high, he said. So are the number of car accidents now tied to drug use. One in which a woman overdosed while driving, triggering a crash that sent another car plunging 80 feet off an interstate bridge. Inter five, inter five only. And the drugs, he says, keep flowing in from Detroit, Michigan and Columbus, Ohio, despite the high number of arrests his force makes. We've got 10,000 heroin addicts here. Uh, there's a market here. Uh, it's, it's basically supply and demand. We have a demand, and there's going to be a supply. It is the, the best of times in Huntington, yet the worst of times. I got a job. The best of times, Mayor Williams says, because collaboration in the city has never been stronger. Lessons are being learned every day. We were talking about finding that balance. That are spreading to other parts of the country. I believe that we will end up on the right side of it. What I am constantly trying to do is lift people up, square your shoulders, and we are from Huntington, West Virginia, and we're showing an example to the rest of the country how you can defeat this. And then as soon as I do that, then we'll end up hearing the fire trucks going by and they're going after another overdose. For the PBS NewsHour in Huntington, West Virginia, I'm Hari Srinivasan. Tune in tomorrow night for a look at Rehab High. We travel to a high school, one of about 40 such schools across the nation, geared toward treating teenagers in recovery from substance abuse. Online, explore our entire series, America Addicted. We've created a special page to showcase all of our reporting on air and online. We're covering the crisis in four chapters, the problem, the drug, the solutions, and new approaches to fighting the epidemic. Right now, get an intimate look inside a neonatal intensive care unit where nurses and doctors save the lives of babies born addicted to opioids and suffering from withdrawal. Plus, get some guidance on how to talk to your kids about opioids. You can find all of that and more on our website at pbs.org newshour.